Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and I'm showing you footage of a previous video where we destroyed an $1,000 cake. And the result of that destruction means that I have some extra styrofoam pieces, which means I get to make a new display cake for my cabinet. So let's get caking. If you watched my pie video where I tried to make Reese Witherspoon's face, then you will recognize this technique. So what I did was I drew out Rihanna's face. I used another picture as a guide, but I did have to freehand quite a bit of it still. And I am just cutting out all of that negative space. Next up, I'm just doing some patchwork on that really ugly piece of styrofoam and putting some fondant into that hole where the iron pipe used to be, and I'm covering it with fondant. This is pretty easy to do. Make sure that when you're doing a square cake that you really get those edges nice and sharp by using fondant smoothers. You can use any airbrush colors you want. I want this cake to pop. So with my stencil, I am just filling in with some black food coloring that has been watered down with some vodka. And voila, there she is. Now I did have to add in some details with a fine brush as well. And I was just actually going back in darkening up those details uh, before. So I did this actually twice. I just didn't get the first time on film. Now you don't have to do this part. You could leave the black just really perfect on the edges, but I wanted it to look really artsy. So I'm taking a really dry brush and then just kind of dabbing out all of that color so that it kind of looks pixelated almost. I think my Rihanna face is a lot more successful than my Reese face, so I'm going to save that for the next pie that I do. I'm using a really unorthodox way of trying to construct a cake board. The only reason I'm doing this is because it's just going to be a display cake for myself. If I were actually giving this to somebody else, I would definitely use a proper cake board and cover it in fondant, not paper. I wanted to do some drapery since this is supposed to be a makeup cake and I wanted it to kind of look like a makeup studio, I guess. So I'm doing some drapery and the way that you do that is you really make thin, thin fondant pieces and then you kind of just treat it as if you would fabric and then adhere it with some water. If you've had trouble making fondant roses in the past, then you need to go out and get one of these cutters. It is honestly the easiest thing you will ever use and it's so quick. I was going for a very particular style with this cake, so I didn't necessarily want my roses to look realistic. If you want a more realistic looking rose, then I would take my balling tool first before I start rolling and just go around the edges of each of those petals so that it gets really nice and thin. Using one of my favorite fondant tools, I am just indenting some of the petals. I love this tool because it doesn't actually slice through the fondant, it just helps you texturize things and then fold out your petals however you see fit. Now, I'm not being super, super gentle with this because I did leave the petals thicker. And then adhere to your cake with a little bit of water. You can also do this with royal icing or you can steam your cake so you can attach things really easily. I also forgot to mention that whenever you're working with styrofoam, all you really need is to cover your styrofoam with water or shortening and then you can attach your fondant. I know I am super sped up here, but actually making all of these roses only took about 10 minutes. I'm telling you, this cutter is amazing. Rihanna is a style chameleon, but I really love when she mixes her edginess with really pretty details. And this pearl mold is absolutely perfect for this. So what you need to do is you just need to put a little bit of cornstarch into your mold, and then I kind of hammer in with my hand the fondant just like that so that it really gets into the crevices and I pat down and notice I'm using my favorite tool again because it doesn't slice through the mat it just kind of gets all that excess off really pat it in and then just gently take it out and it comes out really easily I've worked with several of these types of molds and I gotta tell you this one does it the best all the other ones seem to grab onto it and then I can't pull it out this one just seems to work for me. When creating this cake, I didn't really have a specific vision. I just knew that I wanted to make a Fenty Beauty cake and have something that popped out and was very edgy and fun, but really pretty at the same time. So I'm kind of just adding as I see fit. With all that white, she looks very bridal right now, but we're going to add that punch of color. 
I'm making a couple of the beauty palettes, which was actually pretty easy to do because a lot of her branding for her stuff is very paint-esque. So that was perfect because I already had all the paint brushes out. I am brushing on some edible silver. I will put all the products that I've used in the description below if you want to know what I'm using. My airbrush hasn't been acting up for the past few times that I've used it, so I'm very happy. And it is very, very fulfilling when you airbrush something really nice and smoothly. Her mascara kind of had this dotty effect, so what I did was I took a lot of paint on that top part and then I just used a dry brush to dot it down. I'm freehanding this writing here, but if you're not comfortable with doing that, you could definitely project it or create an edible image. Adding the last finishing touches, and I'm really putting a lot of the detail to the front of the cake since nobody's going to see the back of the cake at all. Final steam! I did put a few inedible pieces of bling on there. Now, if I were making this for someone that was actually going to eat it, then I would probably just get a mold that was similar to that, make it out of fondant, and then paint it silver instead. I am really happy with the way things came together and I'm thrilled that I just kind of got to do whatever I wanted to do. I worked at a bakery for a while and you know when you're working at a bakery you're really often told exactly what to do. So it's so nice to have a little bit of creative freedom. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you want to be part of the Sweetie Fam. Don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions about this tutorial or any requests for future tutorials. I upload every day at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time.